You are watching a pause in AIDSmeds.com interview from the 4th International AIDS Society Conference on HIV Pathogenesis Treatment and Prevention in Sydney, Australia. Good evening from Sydney. This is Peter Staley with AIDSmeds.com, and I'm here with Dr. Fred Gordon, who is uh, Chief of Infectious Diseases at uh, George Washington University. Uh, the VA Medical Center and George Washington University. And Correct. you just gave a very interesting talk this evening uh, titled, Is an Early Treatment Study Important Now? Uh, I was actually uh, the founder of TAG, the Treatment Action Group, back in uh, 1992, and our organization has pushed very hard early on for a, a trial to answer uh, this question of should we be starting treatment earlier. It's been a raging debate uh, at almost all of these international AIDS conferences since the early 90s or mid-90s, and uh, the pendulum keeps swinging back and forth. Summarize what you uh, spoke about tonight. Well, I think the pendulum is a good analogy. Um, clearly, in the early days of HIV-AIDS, in the late 80s and early 90s, before we had effective therapy, uh, the emphasis really was appropriately on people with advanced infection who were dying from major infections, uh, malignancies, and really both clinicians, patients, and researchers focused in that area. Um, after the access to better drugs uh, with first the protease inhibitors and then other agents, uh, people started to ask, when should we use these drugs? Should we wait until people are very sick, 100, 200 CD4 cells? Should we intervene 3, 400, or really even at the time of infection? So I, I agree that question's been unanswered. Um, and it's trying to be a balance between the benefits of the drug and there's almost no other infectious disease where we have a, a drug or a therapy that works and we don't use it. Um, but the drugs have toxicities with them, as obviously you and, and all of your uh, listeners and readers know very well. And so how do you balance um, treating the virus with the problems of adherence, drug toxicity, not even just cost, but uh, really the ability of uh, people as individuals and society to, to take care of a large group of people and medicines that may not benefit from them. The real, the real story we're hearing more and more about, though, are these non-AIDS defining uh, morbidities uh, right. that, that people with HIV uh, are dying uh, of kidney, liver disease, cancer, uh, heart disease, not the traditional AIDS-defining illnesses, and they're doing so at higher rates if they're off treatment. Exactly. So AIDS, of course, is not a single illness. HIV is a virus, but AIDS, for definition reasons, was invented as a, a catch-all of very serious illnesses. And so in the early days, again, that made sense. It was an indicator of severe disease from HIV. But what we've learned from numerous uh, cohort or studies of groups of people, as well as some controlled trials, is that people at higher CD4s, 350 through, say, 6 and 700, when you match them against non-HIV-infected people, or you look at people on therapy versus off therapy, HIV-infected people off therapy have higher rates of cancer, higher deaths from cancer, uh, more liver disease, including severe what's called cirrhosis, um, renal disease that can be major, resu resulting in dialysis, um, as well as cardiac events and just overall more death. And, now, and I don't want to scare people. The absolute numbers are relatively low, but they're higher than, than they should be. And so the question, again, is are they related to HIV? I think the clear answer is yes, and there's very little debate about that. But what's not clear, again, is should we be treating and what would the benefit of treatment in terms of reducing these events versus all the problems that go along with treatment? And that's really the question right now. Are we, aren't we still dealing, though, with uh, a theoretical speculation about why HIV is caught is causing these traditional non-AIDS related diseases, specifically cancer, and, and what it is it about immune stimulation that might be doing that? Uh, very good question that the answer is really not in. Uh, I've been at two different workshops that NIH sponsored in the last four weeks on this. 
There's no answer. I'll just start with that. So whether the virus is interfering, which we know it does with the immune system, whether it's interfering with um, other what are called inflammatory markers, these are, are things that basically show inflammation in the body um, in a way that uh, allows um, cancer cells, if you will, to, to thrive, I'll use that word, it's not very scientific, without um, uh, other parts of the immune system being able to recognize uh, this is a cancer cell, a malignant cell, and, and kill it early on, whether in, inflam, inflammation sorry, in the coronary vessels uh, result in more heart disease, more heart attacks. Th these are theories that um, a lot of blood that's been saved from studies that have gone on, SMART, which was a very large trial, 5,000 people and other studies, is now being evaluated in, in the laboratory to try to understand uh, kind of the answer to your question. So we don't know is the real answer. So now uh, 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 people are, are finally talking about uh, launching a trial. Uh, they've uh, given it a, a great name. It's called START. Right. But they're... What's the status on that? We're still arguing about it. Well, uh, so it's called START, Strategic Timing of Antiretroviral Therapy. It would be targeted at people with high CD4 cells, over 500, half of whom would start immediately and half would wait until they reach 350. Uh, NIH is CD4 cells. CD4 cells, 350, correct. Um, NIH has stated that they're interested in the study. It's going through the final approvals and sign-off so that all studies that NIH sponsor, while the outside investigators create the study inside NIH, they want to make sure it's good science and that's appropriate. Uh, so it's going through those stages now. Uh, Dr. Fauci, when asked this evening by uh, one of the TAG members, Mark Harrington, would he fund the study, said yes, they plan on funding uh, the study. Um, so I'd say it's in negotiations in terms of the final design, final amount of funding, um, but we hope to actually be enrolling patients by uh, hopefully October, November. It was a pretty dramatic moment when, when Mark mentioned that uh, he had been in Fauci's office in 1997 asking him to do uh, this same trial, and, and uh, Fauci said, sure, I want to do it. But uh, it never it never happened, and he said uh, it never uh, got to his desk. Basically, um, basically he said that. But in some ways, I think it, it probably would have come up with a different answer back then. The drugs we have now are clearly more effective, easier to take, and less toxic. So back then, if people with very high CD4s had started on therapy, many of them would have stopped therapy fairly early. And uh, I don't think that would be the situation today. So for whatever reason, it didn't happen then, and probably it was, it was good that it didn't. Well, uh, thank you very much. Oh, oh, one last question. There is a lot of discussion also about the possible public health benefits of starting uh, a larger group of people earlier on treatment in the sense that we would actually reduce HIV transmission. Yeah, that was quite exciting work from uh, Julio Montana in British Columbia who um, uh, certainly his group apparently is modeling what would the benefit be. And, and I think most people would agree there would be a lot of benefit without question, but that we shouldn't treat people who don't benefit themselves. But there's good data that people who are on antiretroviral therapy with v low viral loads are less able to transmit the virus. So looking at a population, the more people on therapy, the less transmission there'll be. It's still not 100% safe. People need to use appropriate precautions, but it, it would still um, be a, a positive gain if, if one could show that the individual benefits as well as society. Well, thank you very much, uh, and thank you for your uh, stimulating talk tonight uh, on this uh, endless pen pendulum of uh, yes. when to start yes, treatment. Exactly. Thank you.